Hello, viewers. I have an amazing couple with me, Barbara and Mattia. Hello. Hello. Hey, Jure. Hey, everyone. Yes, nice to see you like this for the first time in a way that we connect. I like this encounters and that we record our conversation because a lot of things are beneficial for us and for everyone who's listening, viewing. So you're coming from Croatia. You were both former professional athletes. Barbara was playing basketball, Mattia was playing uh, volleyball. Can you please tell me a bit about yourself, present yourself, how was your, uh, not go into details, details, but specific points from your childhood or some things that happened that made you who you are today? Yeah, sure, I can start. So I was born and raised in a small town in Croatia, uh, in the in the eastern part of Croatia, Slavonia. Uh, I started playing basketball when I was 11, and I moved to kind of semi-professionally playing basketball when I was 14. I had to move to a different city where I also changed the school, and I started training, uh, training there. One year after that, I also entered um, in the selection for the Croatian national team for basketball. So yeah, 14, 15 was when I started playing basketball professionally. Um, interesting thing is that I broke my right knee uh, right in the first year, second half of the of the season, first game, I had a major injury. I broke my right knee and the recovery lasted for more than a year, I would say, until until I came back to the to the field. I played basketball overall more than 10 years. I would say I quit somewhere in my mid twenties because I simply had enough and it was enough of, of this kind of strenuous um, exercise or effort for my body. Um, after I stopped playing basketball, I continued with running. After I stopped running because I had all the time some kind of issues with my knee. Um, I found cycling, so I cycled for a couple of years and only last year or two years ago, I even, I, I, I didn't quit cycling, but I quit kind of a professional relationship towards cycling in the sense that I have a schedule, I'm training for 15, 20 hours per week, I, I follow a strict schedule of trainings, of diet and everything, I don't do that anymore, now I just... Uh, I go out to cycle because I like it. And uh, if I feel the need to go out to be in the nature a bit. Yeah, that's that's when it comes to me and, and sports. I was born and raised in Oberlin. I started to play volleyball actually in high school. So before I was actually not so much in the sport, I was in music. But in high school, I developed my uh, love for sport and Especially for volleyball, my father was uh, my professor in high school, so I started to play there. And uh, at the end of the high school, my career comes very, became very quickly. I uh, moved to Zagreb to the best Croatian volleyball team. A uh, year after, I joined junior national team and. Uh, two years later, I became uh, professionally and go to national team of Croatia. So it was really in few years, I from starting volleyball to playing professionally. I was playing uh, about 10 years professionally and then I started to, uh, developing some uh, injuries, uh, pains and uh, process continuous until I... Uh, found the uh, IQ method after I retired for the first time. I had a lot of pain, uh, injuries, uh, but uh, discovering IQ method uh, helped me uh, play uh, again. It was my first returning to the court. I prolonged my volleyball career for three years. And after that, I stopped playing and uh, now sport is just a hobby. And now I'm uh, IQ teacher and helping with this experience to other athletes and other people who need some uh, guidance with their pain, with their uh, injuries and all kinds of other chronic issues. But let's say this. Okay, and you're also a couple. You're together, right? 
Uh, yes. 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 How we did met, that happen? Uh, we met a year and a half ago. Uh, I organized a workshop of uh, cure breathing. And uh, Barbara came. Uh, she was interested in... Uh, actually, she started IQ a few months before, and she came to the workshop, and we met there, and she already decided she will go for a teacher also, and we exchanged some information, and that's how we continue to uh, hanging out, and that's how it all started. Right. Yes, um, we'll, we'll maybe touch that subject a bit later regarding how to start a relationship in a more parasympathetic way, less traumatic, less chemistry, but more like in the maybe correct way to develop step by step, uh, maybe a bit later. What about your relationship with resting as athletes? As I was an athlete as well, playing table tennis, resting for me was only when I was dead tired. Uh, when I had nothing else to do or resting for me was watching TV uh, in between the having uh, trainings and, and intensive uh, workouts. And that was resting for me. Sleeping, it's you sleep in the night. Yes, you sleep. It's normal, but you didn't pay much attention to it. So I also had a lot of guilty trips while I was resting, especially because my parents were working all the time physically. How can I rest? But I couldn't move. Sometimes I was exhausted. I couldn't walk up the stairs that we have to our house, 20 stairs after intensive physical workout. My knees, my, my thighs were burning. And then after five hours, you needed to go back down and work out again. Uh, so the preparation for the beginning of the season. So how was your relationship with resting? I discovered the AQ method three years ago. So when I was playing basketball, I didn't know anything about the AQ method, about this approach. I was, let's say, a typical athlete who had uh, their schedule and they had to follow it. And it was, you know, no pain, no gain approach. So um, I, I trained harder and harder and harder if I injured myself or if I felt that I have a muscle inflammation. I always treated it like, oh no, I need to train harder. I need to become better. I need to overcome that. It's only with the discovery of AEQ method three years ago, that was in the period when I was cycling and that's with, with AEQ method, I started changing my approach towards sport. Even with cycling, it was before like, I didn't really enjoy the rest days because, because I was restless when I had to rest. It was like, why do I need to rest? I want to go out and ride my bike. Look, it's such a nice weather, you know, resting. I don't need resting. And it, it, just like you, I didn't know how to properly rest. It was, I'm either doing something or I'm not doing something. And then I'm just watching Netflix or, or I don't know, something like that. I, and I didn't give a proper uh, attention to, to sleep and to proper, to, to proper recovery. It, it really changed with AEQ because AEQ helped me to feel that I'm tired properly right in time, actually way earlier than before. And now when I changed the whole approach towards cycling, towards sports, I changed the approach towards resting as well. Now I don't see it as something that needs to be done and I feel so bad about it and I don't want to rest. Actually welcome times when I can properly rest because I know that I will feel better the next day then I will be more productive I will be a, a, a better colleague a better friend a better partner a better person when I'm well rested so I would say that nowadays I don't even have um, these cases where I would overtrain myself that I that my body needs to put me how to say in, on purpose I need to rest because now I overtrain myself um I'm able to detect that way earlier so that I, that I don't even go in that kind of state. About resting, I didn't know for, especially at the beginning of my career, I didn't know the word rest because uh, in the beginning of my professional career, I was also studying on a college in in University of Zagreb. So I was uh, studying uh, practice, then go to college, then practice, then study, then a little bit of sleep, and again, and again, and on the 
uh, going to some uh, games and trips, I always took my books with me to study. So there was no time for, for rest. So later, uh, when I finish my um, studies, uh, then, then I started a little bit of rest, but also uh, that came with a lot of pain and injuries. Then, then uh, there was time when I start to feel this accumulated uh, pain and pressure. Because of, I already mentioned, I started really late to play volleyball. So I, in these few years, I had to uh, forget about pain. I had to forget about uh, everything because I have to learn quickly uh, technique and to be uh, in line with my teammates. So I train extra hours with coach individually. So that all came later when I a little bit uh, uh, rest with uh, studies. So then I started to become more, much more tired, much more uh, injured. Uh, also, there was a pressure of club, of coaches. There was some expectation. We were paid for this and we didn't win trophy. So there was always some uh, external pressure to, to handle uh, besides all the pressure in uh, practice and uh, games. So the rest, uh, as I already mentioned before, I met and I was introduced with IQ. I quit. I quit volleyball because I couldn't... Uh, I burned out of everything I couldn't handle anymore. I lost pleasure of play. I lost pleasure for life or for everything. So I feel really depressed, uh, tired. So I took a year off and that was a year when I, uh, I inside of me, I, I felt that I didn't finish my career because uh, of the end, because it was really painful and so I was looking for some uh, comeback, some uh, people who can help me and like Barbara said, there was all no pain, no gain principles and then when I was introduced with IQ, it was the opposite, it was relax, feel, feel your pain, feel your movement uh, and uh, that's how you can become better. It was not about pushing, it was about uh, resting and uh, preparing for uh, the next practice. So it was not always in sympathetic, but parasympathetic mode is also crucial for, for improvement, for um, overall health. That's, that's how resting is, especially today is, misunderstood in professional sport because there was all kind of uh, competitions uh, sponsors are pushing uh, so today's professional sport is far away from sport and far away from overall health for human body and functioning and actually normal functioning yeah you couldn't have said it better and describe the situation. So I want to stay a bit more in this rest, energy, pressure, illusion, and especially acceptance or resistance on the other side, because it's uh, as an athlete, I remember I was, I think I was 16 or something. I was top five in the country and I wanted, I needed to win a tournament so much. I injured myself and I injured myself in a way that I didn't want to accept my injury and I could still play in a way, but I lost every game there on that tournament. You play against seven or eight opponents. I lost all of the games, but I was so much inside the night before I couldn't sleep. I woke up even earlier. I was sleeping little. I was doing movements at, in my room. I didn't accept the reality. I was denying completely no acceptance. Of course, then you have no energy. It's just burning out as if you are, I don't know, um, the, the free dive only with your air that you go and dive in the ocean, in the sea, and you think too much and you worry, the oxygen just burns out the same way, the energy and everything in the body. 
And I want to touch more on this aspect because a lot of athletes are suffering, are making their issues bigger, uh, just covering up their eyes, staying blind, staying with the amnesia, the sensory motor amnesia, living in the illusion, resistance and thinking that resistance will bring you somewhere because then you accept, finally you accept the the instruction, go and rest, have a rest day. You need to rest before an important match. But what the heck? You get even more tired. You feel your body more when you relax. You get sick. The flu comes or this pain or that pain. And you're just like, no, no, I cannot do this. I need to go into the gym. And then everybody goes into the gym because you need to have that tonus, muscle tonus. Uh, so how are you... Um, uh, remembering, if you would go with this knowledge, what you have now back, what would Mattia and Barbara say to the young Barbara and young Mattia? Like, in which way would you talk to yourself in the in the essence of accepting uh, energy level, in the essence of really uh, understanding the inside outside pressure? How would you deal with this? Uh, I would. They uh, actually a lot of people were telling me uh, relax, relax, and uh, I would say also to myself relax. But it's not only on mental relax. You have to teach your body how to relax. You have to uh, go inside and feel and relax. But in the mental level, it's not working. You have to reprogram your autonomic nervous system to relax when it's. Uh, when the training is over and uh, for prepare for the next but so the message is you have to everything will be fine and uh, just uh, learn how to relax so that's that's the only what else how would you expand this relax as they as they all told us they my friends told me my relatives but you, it doesn't enter but how would you make yourself that not forcefully, uh, but that it would enter, that you would accept this instruction. What can you say? In what way? Uh, maybe that relax is even uh, important as a practice. So maybe maybe this. So uh, take your time uh, for uh, learn how to relax the same as you took your time for improvement with everything, with power, with technique, with everything. So uh, it's not about quantity, it's about quality of movement. So think twice and do once, not the opposite. <laughs> so that's, that's the only. So take it slowly, take it easy. It's so that's, uh, I think that's the, details how uh, how I will approach the younger version of myself. But if I tell you, sorry, Barbara, just in between, if I tell you as a response, but if I rest and you say this to me now, I won't have the success. I need to train because this no. is what all the athletes think about. Okay. If they stop training, something will go wrong. They will be injured or fail or they will lose the momentum. I will try to convince, but it's, it's okay to lose one game it's okay to skip practice it's okay you don't have to be hard on yourself just uh, take it easy that's <laughs> take it easy and uh, take it easy and you barbara mm, to go back to your first question which was what would you like older you now tell to that younger child i would literally Tell to that young Barb, it's fine. You can come back home even if you want to. Um, you don't have to do something that you don't feel like doing or you don't have to do something that's so difficult and so strenuous for your body. Because my, as I said, I started playing basketball very early and with 14, I already moved to a different city. I'm very tall, so I was placed to put a position of center in basketball which is under the basket and you have to play there, push around with 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 tall people, with tall girls uh, that were very often much taller, much uh, bigger than I was and older than I was. 
And it was really a big effort for me. Um, I also had a coach who was very hard on us. I would even say at some points abusive. Um, so if I were a parent, if I were to parent myself now, I would I would take myself back home uh, from that situation because professional sport for young girls, uh, the way it was back then, the way it was for me, it was really not healthy in any way. Of course, I have some nice memories. Of course, I have a I have a jersey with my last name and a Croatian flag. And it is a pride. It is amazing achievement. It's not something that everybody gets the chance to do. But the question is under which cost? Um, my body reacted immediately. As I said, I broke my right knee in the first year that I started playing basketball in such a way because I was way too young for such an effort. So I would say it's 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 even if it's too much, it's fine to quit. It's fine to do something else. It's fine to do something that really appeals you. Mom, yeah, my mom told me something a couple of years ago when we had this kind of, you know, a bit deeper discussion about this whole thing. She told me, like, I always felt that your talent was like a burden for you because, you know, I was tall. I was per I had a perspective in basketball. Um, but like somehow a part of me, a big part of me didn't really like it because it was so difficult that I didn't enjoy it most of the time. It was, it was really an effort. Oh, I need to go and train again. Oh, I need to have another game. So it was not really, um, such an enjoyable, an enjoyable experience. Maybe this does not cover the, the question of how to rest. So if it's really too hard on you, too hard on your body, do something about it change the environment change the change the sport do something else see what you can do not to not to go so hard on your body yeah we live in this crazy fast paced world even more uh, i know that in usa 9 year olds have sponsors and contracts uh, it's going crazy i don't know how many generations or decades or years we still need to understand that it's not about only about winning or in, in which way, what the quality of winning is and the consequences. So we are still long away. And that's why I feel it's important that we share and are in contact and bring this closer to people that young athletes and parents start to think about it. Is it really worth it to break yeah. your knee uh, or to have an ACL? A lot of, I'm in contact with a lot of female football players, soccer, and they have ACL and talent, no talent, training. <laughs> Forget about it. It's ACL popping because it's connected in, with the women, with the female menstruation cycle as well, with the hormones and, and what the ligaments can and the nervous system and lymphatic system can withstand in reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, all this, like you mentioned, Matthias, as well, worrying, like you worry all the time, even so you lose that game. Even if you worry, if you train double, triple, you still lose it if it's meant to be. And even you lose it even more because you're tired, you're exhausted, you're burned out. So mm -hmm. in that sense, I know that uh, coming into AEQ for like a high level athlete at the age of 20, 25, it's difficult because it's so much uh, one direction only winning maybe later in the course you're more open because you're vulnerable after injuries that you start to acknowledge and accept oh my god i am in this order i am in entropy i am doing shit to my body to myself to my family i'm sacrificing too much and for what for whom so please shine a light on this uh what you already touched a bit barbara the one side of me and then the other side of me, this consciousness and subconsciousness, this gap uh, of different parts of us. I want this, but I feel like this, or I feel like this and I don't want this. How to bring it into alignment? Uh, maybe already you can touch uh, how AEQ does it or how it did for you that you brought it into alignment and said, okay, this is what I want. This is what I feel. And finally it's aligned. Yeah, so for me, it, it started with sports now that we are with this topic. Uh, it started, I started thinking about this a bit more deeply in, when I was in cycling because I was training so hard and I did, even in cycling, which is not a sport that my body is really designed for female body in general, 
but I am very tall and I'm not, uh, my constitution, bodily constitution is not very apt for cycling uh, because cyclists are smaller and thinner and lighter. Uh, but even so, I wanted to prove to myself and to the world and to I don't know whom uh, that I can do this. I can I can perform, I can excel even in the sports that's not really for me. Um, so the process went that I was training so hard. And as I said, I even had some results here in, in, in Croatia, in this region. Uh, but still, I was all the time either injured or some or I was in pain. My knee was in pain, my hip was in pain, I had a lot of back pain, I had headaches. Um, so I started asking myself, really, what's the point of all of this and how come I'm doing something that I want, meaning I'm cycling and I'm winning medals, so I am achieving that part uh, very well, but still I feel unhappy. You know, I win a, a, win a race or I'm second, third, it doesn't matter which. Still, I don't feel satisfied, I feel empty i i don't feel good and then i started discovering uh, aq method and when i really got in touch and in contact with my body um i started opening that pandora box of asking myself why am i actually doing this what's the reason that i'm pushing myself so much and what is actually that i want uh, why am I doing something? I'm fulfilling somebody else's wishes rather than doing something that I want, which is definitely not overexerting myself so much as I was in cycling. And the more I went into AQ method, first as a as a student, um, second, then I then I obtained a, a degree for a teacher of method, first degree, and teacher of AQ breathing, first degree, and with with each step. I I went to one step down into the, the real reason for this. Yeah, I would say that AQ helped me a lot. Regular learning of AQ movements and regular feeling my body better actually helped me realize what I want and what am I doing that I'm going into the opposite direction of what I actually want. Um, so with that knowledge, I started having a different approach to sports, a different approach to cycling. Um, nowadays, um, I go out for a, for a ride and I don't remember when was the last time I fell, when was the last time I had an injury, because I approach it in a way different way. I'm more conscious. I know I'm not leveling inner and outer pressures with going out for a bike. I, I am able to go now on a bike ride feeling just the need to be in the nature, not the need to vent out. Um, yeah, so this is this is how I approach it now. And as I said, the AQ method helped me feel myself better so I know what are the reasons why I'm doing something. It can it, It's applicable to any area of life, of cycling, of doing anything on a daily basis, of approaching a relationship, approaching a, um, a work in relation with my colleagues. Um, it's really it's different when you feel yourself better, when you feel yourself as an authentic being, not covered with all the layers of trauma and of what something told you you should do, you should feel, um, it's different. It's it's more authentic uh, and, and in, in the end, way better for you on long term and short term. What about your interoception, Matija? Oh, actually, Barbara said already. <laughs> That's we had uh, actually similar stories. That's probably why why we also met. So when you develop some belief in early age that you have to prove someone something, it's difficult to you don't have time to reflect on your inner uh, beliefs. So when your body says no, when you stop. Uh, pushing, forcing, when you can't even move anymore, then it's time to, to reflect. That's what I already said. One year of depression, uh, when I had time to rethink and to find more gentle way to come back to the volleyball. Uh, yeah, that's how I started layer by layer uh, understanding my uh, inner desire to improve uh, to 
yeah, not improving, but uh, to proving others that I'm worthy, that I'm, I'm, uh, I want to uh, show uh, everybody that uh, I'm capable of doing something because, like I said in the beginning, before high school, I was not so much in the sport. I was uh, very tall, very skinny. Everybody played football. I was only I was always pushed away. Uh, so I was not so much into sport. And then I found this uh, kind of sport where I can show uh, the world. I, I can do something. So that's when. Uh, uh this starting to, to to happening too much pressure put on myself uh but to move forward now now it's just another and i i i also need time to like i like and barbara said layer by layer to developing inner reason for uh why I actually the first start to choose this sport to choose this environment and everything and slowly starting to changing inner beliefs and like i said it's just uh you have to find some uh, enjoyment in movement that's what i lost during the process of playing professionally i started in high school as a game and then through the my career, I lost this inner enjoyment of the game. I, actually, there was so much pressure. Then uh, also, you have to, like Barbara said, some coaches, some clubs, they pushes you even more. And so you ask at the end of the day, for what, for why, why are you killing yourself? uh for this kind of persons or uh, personalities so at the beginning it's difficult so you uh, build this kind of character like you're a professional athlete and there is nothing other to to do and to work so uh, i remember i was in so much pain uh, before the game even started and there was actually a lot of these kind of games. So <laughs> at the beginning, I was not in the mood uh, actually for winning. So uh, when you are with this attitude in your team and your coach is pushing you even harder, then you want to finish the game as soon as possible and go to sleep and do some something else. So it's, it's really... Uh, it's really difficult to, like you said, to bring this back on the line, conscious or subconscious. Uh, but it's or actually it's much difficult in this environment when it's always pushing you. You have to be faster. You have to work uh, harder. But when you connect with your uh, inner self, when your inner uh, uh, feelings then uh, slowly you discover that it's okay to fail, it's, of, it's okay to lose, it's okay to uh, quit, it's okay to stop doing what you are doing, it's okay to just relax and, uh, and enjoy. Enjoy your movement, enjoy your body, but not... Um, so much pressure, so much pain, and not feeling anything, not feeling life, not feeling nothing, just pain. We actually get back, or first time, we actually feel identity with ourselves, because otherwise you're just, yeah, fulfilling something else, someone else. You think you want it, but you feel you don't. And this proving and, and being inauthentic. Let's maybe skip a bit from sport into relationship. Um, I will not ask you about the past relationships, don't worry about that, but how is it to be in a parasympathetic relationship or that you are mature, that you can see yourself and point, maybe not show fingers, you are in your subconsciousness, not like that. How are you dealing and, and understanding this background 
the um, programming that's coming out of fascia? Uh, how can you help each other to elevate? How are you um, together combining to grow? Okay, it's easier when we are both now working uh, on this kind of topics and both uh, going uh, working with some uh, actual exercises we actually uh, teach each other uh, exercises so uh, now with uh, in a relationship it's uh, at one side it's easier but on the other side it's even uh, harder because you see uh, your uh, inner uh, reflection on your partner like your inner uh, or your subconsciousness programs you see in your, in your partner and sometimes annoying but uh, your partner is showing your uh, inner weaknesses and uh, showing your way to work through this so now it's easier when you have mirror to see yourself uh, but sometimes it's hard to look at this mirror so <laughs> it's uh journey it's uh developing uh continuously uh working uh individually on your part and then as a couple and uh, support uh, your partner wishes desires authenticity and so uh, yes that's that's how i see it and barbara <clears throat> it's your uh... word now <laughs> Yeah, well, I would definitely definitely say we are also work in progress. So it's not like it's an ideal relationship and we have everything sorted out and we know everything and we never quarrel. We have a lot of quarrels and disagreements. The difference is the approach towards that. It's It's important to have basic understanding and basic trust so that we both have a common goal and that we know that we can trust each other and that we can feel that we can be authentic in front of each other because we both have our past, we, we, we both have our traumas and we were kind of accustomed before that it's not safe to be authentic. And even though we work a lot on ourselves now, um, we do exercises regularly, we go to active therapies which are done on the table with the therapist um, still, it, it's really a work in progress and it needs a lot of patience and a lot of understanding to realize, okay, wait, maybe now it's not my partner to be blamed. Maybe this is my problem and that I need to tackle and he does not deserve or she does not deserve um, to receive this energy or this kind of approach from me. Um, so what what's it's beautiful to be in a relationship with a new partner and it can be very difficult. Because it's constant work in progress and we are constantly, both of us are aware of it. It's not like one is not, I, I wouldn't say not interested. It's not like one is not conscious. Like you do things on autopilot. You don't care what you say. You don't care what you do. You just go move on with your life as most of people do on autopilot. Uh, we tend to be very conscious and it requires a lot of energy to be present all the time and to be careful not to hurt a partner or not to say something that you, that you shouldn't. But it's also a very good opportunity to resolve these things, these issues that we have as individuals now that we're in, rela in a relationship. As Matia said, it's like a mirror. Um, so the partner clearly shows you where you're at and what are your problems which is if you want to move forward and we both, that's why I said we have to have a common goal and we both want to move forward and become better partners, better people, better AQ teachers. It's great to have such a partner who can hold that mirror and who can in the same time hold space for you to feel free and comfortable in front of that mirror, not to be afraid, not to be ashamed, not to feel guilty because you are like that. Um, so yeah, a lot of patience, a lot of acceptance, a lot of love, a lot of um, gentleness to once over each other. I think we all have we have that definitely. So it's great. Um, but as I said, work in progress. 
sometimes not sometimes definitely not easy because the as you know the deeper you dig the more you uncover and then you have a partner who also unco- uncovers his traumas his issues so now it's not that you are do- dealing just with your own stuff you have two piles of manure <laughs> to to shovel uh but you have an extra pair of hands so uh, yeah Both. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I feel it myself that the more I'm into it, the more I'm digging. Uh, I'm also with a partner. She doesn't do as often the AQ. She's more into tennis, but slowly. I know that I need to work on myself uh, to sort of invite or be more attractive in that sense. That I'm mm-hmm. showing and integrating my awareness and my emotional maturity, which mm-hmm. I'm noticing more and more on myself. And I'm seeing this bright future, being in this manure, traveling, you can sort of begin to see it's the right thing. Even if it's hard, it's harder than just, you know, being autopilot. It's uh, harder to confront than not to. Uh, How do you feel this integration of emotional maturity and growing and working on yourself and each other is uh, your future like how do you see this future like living towards or into definitely with raising emotional maturity um, we notice that we react towards each other as i said differently so before it was kind of on autopilot now we are perfectly not perfectly to correct myself we are aware and we are capable of spotting things earlier uh, at the early stage so we don't allow things to escalate volcano to erupt we are able to tackle things differently at their start and uh, yeah, approach things differently with more maturity. Uh, when it comes to future, we both expect um, that the em- emotional maturity, both of us as individuals and of us as a couple will grow. Um, that's why it's also, as I said, it's beautiful to have a partner who also works on himself because if only one partner in a relationship goes up and the other partner stays here or even goes down it's it's difficult to maintain to maintain such a relationship when two people are on such a two different levels uh so our goal is you know to raise both together up and then you know to converge somehow together towards a a common goal yes anything you'd like to add matia no no it's well that's really well said so no no, not to add, not to. No comment or like comment. you are no, accepting and was, applauding. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Yes. Good. What about the people that come to you or towards you searching, asking for help? Uh, what are the most common issues or how do they approach? Maybe first, how do they approach? Like save me or do this. I need this so that I can continue my old way or they are already coming in a different way. And then what are the issues that they um deal with of well, actually there are a lot of uh r- r- big range of uh, issues uh but uh, mostly it's a pain it's a, a chronic pain in the body so uh it's all all start with pain and that's how we approach individually and uh in the group depend on the are we working one on one or they are in a online program uh it depends on how they they deep want to understand so at the beginning it's all uh, like easy the the exercises they are helping them to feel more to relax to feel better but it's all individual, like uh, all kind of uh, injuries, uh, pains, chronic issue, uh, chronic pain. So uh, all kinds of people are uh, looking for some um, answers. So yeah, also, like you asked, uh, someone is looking for help, like save me. Uh, someone is looking just for advice so it's all all kind of different types of of people so uh, actually the smallest part are the 
professional athletes. So they they don't uh, uh, have time to slow down. So they always uh, too much uh, competitions, practices. So they don't. They always find some excuse to not uh, work on this. But I I I understand because I uh, move through. All of this, uh, of course, there are others. Uh, there are other technique uh, who can help you relax, uh, to breathe. I also work before with sports psychologists, so I also developed some technique of breathing early on. But uh, like I said, when you uh, go to too much pressure and if you don't understand the inner cause of your problem then you can uh, stuck in this uh, repetitive uh, movement training or practice of this of that so you lost your inner self inner sense of like uh, what's good what's bad so a lot of people are sorts of people are coming to, to me and also you can set for yourself in my case um, as i'm first level teacher i still cannot work with people one-on-one -on, -one on the table uh, like matia can that in the individual active active therapy active learning as we say in aq method so I mainly work with people through online programs, online Zoom program. Um, uh, my program is in the morning. So I work with, I mainly work with people in their, let's say, in between 40s and 60s. So people who are employed, who have somehow already their, their lives in order. Uh, and then they mainly come to me in the sense like I have a back pain or ha I have some sort of pain. Um, I read about AQ method, I find the approach interesting, can I join the program? I didn't have anybody approaching me in the way, oh, I have this issue, can you please save me? Or will your method help me to cure me or something like that? I didn't have such an interaction yet. Um, mainly people that come to my program tell me that they, they really enjoy these exercises because they help them relax, they help them feel better. Um, we always talk about the difference before uh, doing a EQ exercise and after doing it. And this is what they enjoy the most when they spot the difference. And then with that relaxed state after the exercise, uh, they go into their day and they feel that they feel better. Or for example, they uh, they notice something during the exercise that, oh, I, I felt that this is tense. I wasn't aware of it before the exercise. You know, thank you for, for helping me how to acknowledge that. Um, I also have a, let's say I have, for example, I have one lady, she's retired in her late 60s and she really likes to come to these exercises because it just makes her feel better. It's her time in the day for her. Uh, these exercises help her feel relaxed. Um, she doesn't go too deep into the AQ method as such and the reasons for that pain. He, she just simply enjoys the exercises, enjoys the method. And, you know, for me, that's fine as well. Uh, it really depends from a person to a person how deep they want to go. Uh, in my case, if they want to go deeper than my level or my knowledge covers, then I usually forward them to a, a higher level teacher who can help these Yes, uh, usually the Matia who can work with them on a bit more deeper level, as I said, one on one on table where you can feel more deeply uh, sensory motor amnesia. How do you see the breathing in the sense of I was like I was taught to breathe in the yoga, like with the belly when I was 14 years of age and I actually won a national championship just by breathing before, you know, entering the point. I slowed down. I closed my eyes, I inhaled, I then I opened my eyes, I threw the ball and I played the, the point in table tennis. And I thought my, like, more than half of my life, I was thinking I know how to breathe through my nose and with my belly. I was aware of the diaphragm, but it was there somewhere. 
but then the AQ method and the, the program that I attended and then the teaching, the education, the certificate gave me a, a vast uh, image and, and, and big picture of understanding and how little I know and how much I still need to work on. And I'm doing these modules, I can say consistently for the past six, seven months. And I see the effect of my carbon dioxide, of my oxygen, of my emotions, control and everything. So it's reflected on the outside, my inside interoception work. How do you see it? How do you use it for yourself and with clients, um, these protocols and, and uh, AQ breathing access? Okay, I, uh, I also, like I already said, started with breathing exercise, exercises very early with my sports psychologist. So it was really slowly and uh, simple techniques of breathing. So I use them in controlling my uh, pressure during the important points in games. So uh, I already was familiar with this kind of topic. But uh, when I attended the IQ seminar for breathing level first, uh, then uh, the all other, uh, the whole new world opened up. Uh, like you, uh, after you, uh, I think you also finished, like like you said, seven or six months ago. Yeah, uh, yeah I also, after this seminar, I, one year I was doing research here, researches, trying to deeper uh, understand what's behind the breath, uh, because all my career, nobody told me uh, how, uh, how I'm breathing because I was always breathing on my mouth. Uh, you can also hear in my voice. Uh, uh, I was always sleeping with a bottle of water beside my bed because my mouth were always open uh, during the sleep. And I always, uh, I, a few times uh, by night, uh, uh, I had to drink water because my mouth was <laughs> very dry. So uh, discovering this after my volleyball, volleyball career was how nobody told me this before, why it's uh, uh, so important to breathe to the nose, to breathe slowly, to breathe with your belly and to breathe quietly. Nobody told me this. So uh, also, uh, with IQ, uh, we deep like we already spoke a bit deeper. Why we lose uh, this uh, uh, natural breathing as a kid? So at the beginning, uh, it's difficult to uh, to hear the or or to find and accept the truth. What happened uh, in the childhood? Why? you discover unfunctional breathing, but slowly understanding and accepting and slowly uh, changing your patterns of breathing, uh, your health can improve. So with working with clients is also the same. We encourage them to uh, slowly change their uh, patterns of breathing to start to uh, sleep with mouth closed and uh, with programs, online programs and with individual work, we uh, slowly try to change their uh, unaware, unconscious breathing patterns. So that's how its, it's approach is uh, like uh, we already spoke about everything uh, helping you to overcome your subconscious patterns, they're not helping with movement. We spoke movement before, but it's also applied with breathing. And you, Barbara, how are you accepting or experiencing your breathing patterns being changed and uh, developed? I had a similar story to Matya, well, with most of things related to sports. So 
when I was doing basketball, even when I was running and cycling, nobody actually told me how to breathe. And I myself didn't think that I didn't see the importance of thinking about that because you you know how to breathe somehow. It's not under your conscious control mainly. Um, so, you know, the body knows how to do it. I just follow. Um, I just breathe whatever my body wants, uh, wants me in a way that it wants me to breathe. So I was also a mouth breather. Uh, oh, I know through my whole career, especially when, you know, the pulse is high, sometimes you have to breathe, breathe through your mouth, but not all the time. I slept with my mouth open, also having dry mouth, waking up in the night. Uh, it's only with AQ method that I started thinking more differently and deeply about breathing. I even, I did some yoga before um, AQ method. And as you know, they also focus there on breathing. But I found this difficult because only with AQ method, I realized that I actually cannot breathe properly if my chest muscles and my belly muscles, my torso muscles are contracted. Uh, so with the AQ method, I learned first how to, you know, literally make space for breathing, how to relax my stomach, which is chronically tense, which is my issue, uh, how to relax my chest so I can fully inhale and how to teach my body that it's fine to do that, that it, that it is fine to breathe with full with full capacity, nothing bad is going to happen. Because when you do the modules, you can really experience your full potential with full inhale. And you sometimes can feel how it is to really fully exhale, which is sometimes that a lot of people never actually did, like fully, fully exhaled all the air from, from, from the lungs. And what AQ method helped me is to gain understanding and to realize, realize that it's fine to do that now. It's not, I'm not anymore in the situations 15, 20, 30 years ago where I was in some sort of danger and I had to change my patterns of breathing. It's fine. I'm a different person now. I'm in a different environment now. I can allow myself slowly to learn how to breathe in full capacity. Um, so th this is what changed for me a lot. I also, uh, when I when I attended the seminar, I realized how breathing and emotions are tightly connected. After I remember after finishing the breathing one seminar, I was I was depressed for a while with all the knowledge that I gained on that seminar. Uh, but I slowly started, you know, learning from that depression and and taking that knowledge um, to improve my life. To improve the way I feel emotions, to improve the way I deal with emotions, and to improve my breathing, because I realize that with breathing, you, you can do so much with breathing. You can you can calm your nervous system, you can arouse your nervous system when it's needed, and it can be fully under under your control in most of these situations in daily life. Um I also started, we tape our mouths when we sleep. So now I can say I breathe uh, through my nose. Uh, when I sleep, I even notice that sometimes if I don't tape my mouth, I would, I would still breathe uh, through my nose because when I wake up in the morning, I don't have that mouth dryness and I, I feel fine. And you can really, you can really sleep much better when you, when you breathe through your nose. And when we go sometimes, let's say for a hike or we do some exercises, we breathe way more consciously now. I literally pay attention how I breathe. And if I feel that I that my body is asking me to breathe through my mouth, I know that I need to slow down a little bit. I'm not competing against anybody. You know, the mountain peak is still going to be there. I can, I can slow down a bit, uh, breathe through my nose and I will still get there and I will feel better than if I rush and breathe through my mouth and then come exhausted and not feeling well. Compete all against me. Yes. <laughs> On the way up. And when it comes to clients, they uh, they do enjoy um, sometimes uh, people that I that I talk with about AQ breathing, AQ method, they like to joke, uh, hey, Barb, come and teach me how to breathe. And then um, when I show them actually what it means to breathe in AQ way, uh, they are pleasantly surprised, like, hmm, I didn't know I can feel that, or I didn't know I was breathing incorrectly, so to say, or I didn't know I can 
I can feel so relaxed after a couple of minutes of uh, module one or module two. So from my experience, it's mainly a pleasant experience from clients. They feel more relaxed. They feel better. Sometimes there are some clients who maybe don't enjoy that much feeling relaxed because they're not accustomed to it. It's something new. As you know, we are all, all the time aroused, uh, doing things we cannot stop, we cannot relax. But most of them welcome that state because it's so natural and it's so nice to step on a break a little bit and, and to relax. And breathing is a super powerful tool for that. Yeah, I think we've touched a lot of points. Um, it's time to wrap up in the sense of as I feel and the more I'm deeper in myself and with the, the AQ approach, how important it is and why is it so important to slow down, to feel, to recognize, to take it easy, to align, to just connect your subconsciousness, consciousness, to feel the way you breathe, become aware of it. I feel that we have a quite big task in front of us to teach the world how to be more parasympathetic and not so driven. How do you see yourselves or why do you see it's so important to slow down? Mm, I'd like to start with uh, to, to answer this question with a, with a comparison with a story that Alesh, the, the author of the method, always likes to tell. It's when you are driving a car on a motorway and you go very fast and notice, ask yourself how many things you can pay attention to when you're driving so fast. Very few, you can just see in front of yourself on the road what, and that's it. But when you slow down, when you go from the highway to a unpaved road, let's say, you need to drive way slower and you can actually notice things. Mm, such a nice field, nice, I don't know, forest in front of me. Um, how I'm breathing, how I'm feeling. Well, I can discuss with somebody who is on my passenger seat. Um, it's we can we can um, forward this anecdote or this story to life in general when you're going through life too fast you simply can't properly enjoy all the experiences and all the things that are happening to you during the day uh, because you don't you don't have energy you don't have a yeah you don't have energy to pay attention to them to realize what's actually happening and then what happens, you realize, oh, that was a year ago. What happened in that year? I don't know. I was an autopilot and I didn't notice. So if you really want to enjoy life, you can do it literally by slowing down. Um, and even though sometimes it will feel weird because we are all accustomed to just go very fast and you need to do this as soon as possible and don't go to the next task and next thing and next thing. The question is, how much are you enjoying all these things if you're going so fast through them? So it's better to slow down a bit, maybe to have less of these things that you are doing, but enjoying them properly. So quality instead of instead of quantity. And yeah, as you said, slowing down is the recipe for that. To feel relaxed, to enjoy life more, to feel better in general. And Mattia? I would like to... Compare this with this already, what I said about the message to my younger self while I was playing professionally with this kind of uh, pressure and pain. I didn't have time. It was moving so fast that I, I couldn't reflect on my uh, results and my victories. I only could reflect on pain. So there was no enjoy in this. Actually, yes, there was some some moments um, to enjoy, to celebrate, but uh, not enjoying the, actually the process to go to the trophy. You, so that's why we only focus, actually before I was only focusing on the end, on the end of the uh, season on winning championship on uh, winning uh, cup so and then I felt happy because it's uh, now we have something and now it's over and it's feel uh, feel good but I suppress all the small steps and 
during this process, I didn't pay any attention to how I feel. So I was always, always pushing, 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 uh, not to see uh, enjoyment during the process. So the message is the same. Like I said, uh, take it easy and uh, enjoy. It's not about destination. It's about the process. And if you don't align, if you are not aligned uh, with this process, uh, if you don't feel uh, enjoyment uh, life in this process then you should maybe turn your direction on some other way not uh, uh, focusing on the goal no matter what so that's uh, that's how i see it. to slow down to enjoy the process and to feel more alive thank you Thank you for sharing. Uh, I will post your links below in the description so people can contact you that feel aligned and connected with you, that can that relate with your story as well, because we all have our group that can relate to us and that we can help and, and grow and teach. Um, yes, take it easy, slow down. Thank you for the message from my heart. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for contacting us. And yeah, at uh, the beginning, English uh, was really, at the start of my uh, high school, the English was really, really uh, bad for me. So my teacher <laughs> will be uh, proud if she's, <laughs> if she see uh, here what I was speaking on English. So thank you for calling and for Yes, contacting us and uh, for making this conversation. Thank you.